Hello, welcome everyone to the weekly Delvian meeting. Thank you for tuning in. So we'll go through our regular agenda, you know, market update, a uh, quick look at the earnings, which is pretty much winding down. Then uh, we have Joe's analysis at the end. Uh, just a note, we'll probably have um, our next earnings plan Q2. Hopefully it's better than Q1. Q1s have been bad. <laughs> past three years um, on the 19th. That's what I'm planning for, for uh, the next earnings release. So, all right, let's get started. And some, okay, so indices, you can see SPX, fill in one, NDX, Russell, you see Dow uh, flipped into two, really interesting. Uh, also had some of the ETFs down here. Now, this was last week, XLE. We had uh, industrials, XLI, that one flipped in the last week. So we got three and twos there. So, but overall, you know, you can still see how you know, our green pie went down 61, teetering right on the uh, 50 50 mark. So we'll see if it can hold that and bounce back up. Um, seeming like it wants to, you know, not oversold or overbought on the <clears throat> state ones anymore. So we're below that 45. Uh, let's take a look here. So this is bullish bearish. Um, you can see like here, this is the 20th of May. We're up around 70. I mean, we're pretty much, you know, SPX or SPY is pretty much like the same level, although we dropped you know, a bunch in the green pie right there. So it seems like it's still pretty strong, you know, if we can hold that 50 level, you know, and kind of bounce back. Um, I think that'd, that'd be for, you know, a good strong run. Doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen. I don't know if we can. Yeah, it's just you know, kind of like back in here, it just kind of bounces off like that. I mean, it does happen. So, uh, just a thought. Um, nothing really here. You know, we had a little spike in the lows, and then we had a nice run up with the highs here. You know, um, so now we're just kind of chopping, kind of finding that direction. Not either uh, green or red as, you know, really... Yeah, maybe today we'll start seeing some more highs. I think um, you know, we we want to see these type of numbers, you know, to be bullish but, you know, on the market overall. So this kind of chopping right here, which basically indicates you know it's been flat overall for the market. So uh, let's see, these are just the moving averages. Same thing, just kind of chopping back and forth. Um, and then uh, <clears throat> transitions, so we got a little bit here. Uh, we had the big spikes here, big spike here in the bearish and the bullish and back to the bearish is kind of back and forth really. Um, let's look at the states overall, the individual states. All right, so we kind of peaked uh, right around 49. So that 45 level is a pretty good call. Like over, yeah, we dro dropped a lot. Um, since then, 38. You know, if you look at kind of like the transitions, so all those, you can just see the mirror here. The ones went into two. So obviously just getting a little, uh, you know, you know, breath wise, you know, all, some stocks are, <laughs> you know, getting beat up, but yeah, the SPY that's been holding pretty strong overall. But, you know, the, the pullback's kind of been felt in the Russell <laughs> type stocks, not, uh, you know, the big, the big guys. So those have been pretty flat in a couple of weeks here. So, so, you know, we'll look to see if we get any kind of transitions. Uh, it's in there too tight. 
So yeah, we got the twos and then fours a little bit. So if we get you know a big spike like this in twos, obviously it's gonna be a nice pullback. Um and then we look for that transition into the fours. But you know, right now it just got a little build up, you know, seems like it kind of stopped today. So we'll see if there's any follow through, but Okay, that's it for the pulse. <clears throat> Let's go in to SPX. So 20 days in, we got our kind of typical pattern, right? So we're kind of running back up right now. So this one's actually following that typical pattern. Um, you know, 20 days, so halfway for the average time. You know, the high here, um was that <clears throat> one five three four one and i think we're pretty close to that right now i think we're let me pull it up so we're at five three three seven so it didn't quite hit it but looks like we want to <clears throat> make new all-time highs today so all right so you know that level um so target one, two kind of area that's above the all time high that five, three, four, one. So that's right up at that 5,400. So that's the top of the range, you know, bottoms 5,000. So that'll be, uh, I would expect some pretty strong resistance up in this area. Um, if, if we do climb all the way up to 5,400 area. No, well, obviously if we can get above that, you know, that'd be the, uh, the new range if we can stay above there and you know can run from there so it's just a matter of getting over that 5400 um you know closing above there that's where we're at currently um you know, downside you know wise <laughs> you got the entry price 5187 let me uh pull up the averages here So not not a whole lot, you know, down to the entry price. We got the uh, fifty day, so fifty one eighty six, fifty one eighty seven. <laughs> so that match up. There's your uh, really strong support there. So that's your twenty uh, fifty day there. Let's pull up the twenty day. We're kind of right on that twenty. So you can see, you know, this whole last run at 20 was real important. So, you know, so far it's showing importance right here. I mean, you can just see the close right below. Um, and then, you know, next day it had that basically went down to the 50 day and ended up closing above. Same thing. So it's showing support again here. So this would be a, a key one to watch. Uh, that 20 day EMA, so it's 52, 53, and obviously that'll change every day, but 52, 53, we're, uh, you know, almost 100 points off that. So with today's move, so I'd be watching that. And then, you know, down below, <clears throat> you got the uh, 50 day, and then bottom of the range is uh, 5,000. So let me. I'll just put the line here so you can see that 5,000. So the last pullback basically won't close below there and you now off to the races. So you now top end is up here, 5,400. So, you know, we'll see, you know, stay above that 20, you know, it'll just keep trending higher and higher. So, okay, that's it for SPX. Set up Russell, <laughs> little Russell. So failed at 2100. Uh, had that close above it, and then that was it. So been dipping all the way down. You know, I think holding that uh, 2000 level. You know, these we talked about that last week. Kind of like every hundred points is like support and resistance for them. So for the Russell. So you know, we're top end of the range is 2100. Yeah, bottoms off 
the chart here, 19. But I would also look at, you know, definitely holding 2,000. You know, we'll see if uh, not your typical move, kind of a little lower. But, you know, we could see if both of these kind of get a nice rally up. Um, I think the rate drop in rates is helping, um, you know, especially for Russell. You know, it likes lower rates. So see if we can make another run at 21, possibly. You know, outside of that, you got, you know, your entry price here, 2064. And then uh, let's see where we're at. And then, so we're right about at that point, 2060-ish. So get above, you know, that entry that, you know, that's definitely net positive and see if it can get over 2100. You know, it's been same kind of stats, 20 days in, about halfway done. Um, you know, I had a little move, hadn't hit the target or stop, but yeah, it's really that 2100 has been the problem for, uh, for the Russell. And I'll pull it up here on the chart just to make it abundantly clear, 2100. There's your bottom range, <clears throat> 19. So even then, you know, like I was saying, there's that, you know, that uh, 2000 level, you can see a lot of support, resistance, support, resistance. So, you know, pretty much every 100, <clears throat> it's going to be important uh, for you know, the Russell, but we'll see. See if we can make a run back up above 2100. You know, that's range, bottoms 19. You now we're on the up in here. So I don't know. You know, I, th I think if we get, you know, rates lower and lower, then, uh, you know, that's going to be good uh, for the Russell. So it's up pretty big today. So, you know, here's the 10 year, been very volatile. Yeah, it's been volatile for a while, but yeah, we got up here like 430 something. Uh, that's just like a one day, <laughs> one day chart. I mean, this is like unusual for this, but you know, so we were up here four six. Yeah, that was end of the month. That was like <laughs> last week. Yeah, you know, and now we're down to four three. So that's a big drop. So that's uh that's good overall for the market. I think you know lower rates are better, uh, especially for Russell. You know, crude had it's had a nice drop. So those are both the tailwinds for the market overall. Um, which is just kind of making me a little more bullish. Um as long as those hold. So let's look at the uh, Fed. So this is only a week away, the next meeting. It's crazy. Time flies here. Uh, so nothing nothing happening <clears throat> next week. So we have seen movement, though. So July, it's uh, still not a cut. It's like it moved you know, up 6% from last week uh, for a cut. You know, but it's still way off. But first cut now, you know, it was November. Now it's kind of looking towards uh, September. So you can see this, you know, kind of flipped everything. You know, the previous weeks, everything was shifting, you know, uh, towards the last cuts. This past week it actually shifted more cuts uh, week over week. So you can see 50s, it's the 50s here. So right now, September would be first cut. And then, you uh, you know, definitely by November, it's looking like, you know, these shifted a little, you know, for more cuts, 13 to 28, and then end of year, you know, that also moved, you can see here, 42 to 40. So that's uh, basically one cut to two is kind of where it's at right now. So we'll see if those things hold. And, uh, you know, we got job number Friday. We'll see, <laughs> you know, it's inflation data and things keep coming out. We'll see how uh, things go. Nothing here, just slow trickles off, um, but nothing else there. So I think that's it market-wise. I'll open up to questions. Oh, hold on. I think I had some. 
Let me see. Oh yeah, there's the uh, U.S. stock stock market breadth, <laughs> um, equal weight versus price relative. So you can see, like, uh, you know, it's definitely we're not getting the breadth. You know, kind of like when we were talking about back here, like a big breadth problem. Same here, seeing the same thing, breadth problem. <clears throat> so basically, this uh, Nvidia market, you know. Uh, Microsoft, NVIDIA, all those kind of big ones are driving gains. And then, you know, the rest of them equal weight or uh, just underperforming overall. So big names are propping things up. Let me uh, think of another one. There we go. Same kind of thing. Five largest companies as a share of the S&P. <laughs> So, you know, this goes all the way back to 1980. So, um, you know, I think if we pull up SPY, there we go. Here's your top five holdings, Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA, Amazon, Google. <clears throat> One, two, four, five, those are your top five, so. Pretty much just emphasize the same thing as here. <laughs> so anyways, interesting charge. So I'll open up to questions, comments. Josh? Josh, yeah. you, know, you know, I think I kind of often talk about not much has changed in the markets with the ex exception of the speed of the markets. Mm -hmm. But you know, the, the, those charts you just brought up, that that is a meaningful change in our markets, and right. I, I just wonder what the implications are. Um, I mean, that is, you know, a staggering change, and it, it's interesting because you know you yeah, and I it's all kind of post COVID our... too, right? So I mean, you look at uh, you know this is COVID right here, right? Twenty twenty. Uh, yeah, all post COVID. You know, I saw a chart uh, that was similar uh, that had the earnings growth for S&P 500, and then you had the earnings growth for the S&P 500 minus the max mag seven. Mm -hmm. And so if you took the mag seven out, earnings have been declining for the other 493 companies <laughs> over the last uh, I, I don't remember. I don't have the graph in front of me. But yeah. Over the last three or four quarters. So yeah. uh, all the growth in earnings has been in the Mag Seven. Obviously, Nvidia being the the market leader right now. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, there have been times when Apple was that leader, and Microsoft was that leader, and Google, and so on. But it, and all of the Mag Seven, their earnings are growing. So, uh, right. but. Uh, yeah, the the other four hundred and ninety three uh, earnings are declining. You know what that signals to me is that if Nvidia slows down, stumbles a little bit, uh, the whole S and P five hundred is going to go down. And what I well, also heard never, is that could never happen. What? I, I was just saying that could never happen. Nvidia go down? Come on now. <laughs> yeah. I'm teasing. Well, yeah, I mean, my most... career in the semiconductor world, and I think a couple of other people on in on this call have so thirty plus years in semiconductors, and there's always a time where one company was leading the pack on everything. I remember when Intel could do no wrong, mm -hmm. and AMD eventually caught them. I'm not, you know, Intel, I'm about to buy a new laptop this summer. I'm going with AMD. They have the best processors on the market. So NVIDIA has the lead right now, but AMD, Intel, other people are developing chips to compete with them. And they, these leads in semiconductors don't last forever. Then eventually people catch it. Right. No doubt. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. That's all right. 
Uh, furthermore, as I understand it, NVIDIA's big customers are Google, Microsoft, uh, Tesla. Amazon, what? Tesla. <laughs> Tesla, Amazon. But it's kind of like the Magnificent Seven. So mm -hmm. if there's difficulty in that area, uh, it, it bleeds across from one to the other. Right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, if there's, but okay. yeah, we haven't seen trouble in, you know, I mean, we saw like Facebook have some problem, but then they came roaring back, right? I mean, um, yeah, I don't, yeah, I guess if we have like a global downturn, obviously they'll be hit just like everyone else, right? Yeah. Hey, uh, Josh, since <clears throat> the whole idea of Delphi and the, Basis is states. And what state are we in? Is it an even or an odd state? And is there a correlation with anything else that you've been able to see, or Joe, or where uh, and before we've spoken that Keltner channels play in a big way with Delphian and predictions of what mm -hmm. what happens of trades when you say trades but is there some other correlation because i see so many things that i think create difficulty for the stock market and although it hasn't been happening and it should have um mm -hmm. yeah um it just concerns me you know there hasn't been a real pullback uh, 10, 15% since when? Well, we, had the, like, we had a bear market for a while, right? But it's just, you know, like if you go back through all the the charts, right? We, we had a, like a bear market for a while, right? Like here, it was like <clears throat> 2021, basically down to, you know, here, October, yeah. and kind of recovered. We had a nice, you know, drop here and then this rip your face off rally here <laughs> that thing straight up you know a little bit of pullback so i mean it's just uh kind of with this whole like here basically of a bearish type market you know with pops in between so it's just you know this one right here was pretty you know this october that's pretty crazy. Yeah, we got a little pullback and just, you know, resumed. But, you know, I think a lot of it is, uh, you know, government spending. You know, uh, there's just uh, a lot of stimulus still in the system, um, even though, you know, they're barely reducing this balance sheet, like, week over week. But, you know, the federal government's, you know, I think every 90 days, it's another trillion. So right. that's kind of kind of like you know, another trillion in debt that's what I read so that's uh like the new stimulus to at least you know keep the economy going while the Fed tries to fix you know their balance sheet but just my thought right yeah, yeah I've heard the Treasury is doing something on the side that completely counterbalances what the Fed is doing so the Fed may be letting securities fall off their balance sheet, but mm -hmm. the Treasury is doing something, and I wish I was more articulate with it, to add support, lack of right. federal law. Well, all right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, Lee. All right. Uh, anyone else? Good questions. Uh, hey, Josh. Dan here. Hey, Dan. Um, do you recall a chart at one time um, where some of the major pullbacks happened right after the Fed started cutting rates? Oh, yeah. It's somewhere in there. <laughs> yeah. Well, my, my point is I think a lot of people are, you know, waiting for this pullback. To come, you know, something substantial, you know, twenty percent. Um, 
you know, I don't know if that could happen, you know, around election time politically. Uh, it looks like right now that uh, the Fed may be targeting some uh, rate cuts, you know, around that time frame. So it, it's kind of hard to predict when the next, it's impossible really to predict it predict when the next market pullback will be, but mm -hmm. those are some of the tea leaves you can kind of look at, you know, uh, take it with a grain of salt, I guess. Yeah. But uh, I, I was looking at, a, there was a, a webinar and they were com they were talking about uh, NVIDIA and its potential going forward. And <clears throat> they compared it to Berkshire Hathaway stock. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway, uh, they, well, NVIDIA is doing the, the 10 for 1 uh, stock split coming right. up. Right, that's in, Friday. In, yeah, and um, they compared that to uh, Berkshire, who has never split their stock. Mm -hmm. So Berkshire A is uh, trading right now like almost $614,000 a share, <laughs> right. you know. But they compared the uh, the market cap, uh, the uh, earnings per share, and, and things different matrices, uh, you know, across the board comparing the two. And and right now, Nvidia is just blowing Berkshire Hathaway away. And um, so, I'm one of those guys. I'm waiting for a pullback in in Nvidia. You know, I ha I hate chasing a stock, but when <laughs> I look at something like the comparison that I was watching, I'm like, th this thing could really take off, you know? Uh, I know a lot of people are buying it uh, just because they think they're going to gain something out of having a, you know, 10 for one uh, stock. Yeah, they split. usually run up into like the split and then after the split, it'll kind of meander around for a while until it like resumes. That's yeah, I think post-split, yeah, yeah, I, I, I see that i i think post split might be probably the best opportunity at least in the short term to uh make a trade you know on a on a downside you know so yeah yeah i mean just kind of see how it reacts after the the split and i mean I've usually i mean just kind of go back and look at like when apple split see what happened there it might be a similar type playbook you know yeah Apple and Amazon when they did their split. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, you could compare those. So. Yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah, yeah. We did have that recent 20% pullback, might have been 22% in NVIDIA, you know, in April. It, it happened in you know a matter of maybe two weeks, but it was it was north of 20%. Oh, crazy. Yeah, so it was Oh, okay. Thanks, Andy. Thank hey, you. Thank you. Hey, Joe, hey, Joe, was there a correlation that the market pulled back a certain percent? The S and P, let's say. Do you know? Oh, we didn't get any. We we got nothing near the the Nvidia. You know, a lot of the techs pulled back fifteen to yeah, I don't know about twenty five percent. Nvidia was north of twenty. I think the overall averages were more like seven, six, seven percent. And you know, the yeah. low was April nineteenth. And basically, the market took off right out of it. Okay. And and the highs varied. March eighth, I think, was was the high in a lot of this stuff. Um, and then you had kind of a, a retest of the highs a couple of weeks later, and then boom, you know, right into that April nineteenth, you know, sell off. And again, the speed of, you know, who who the heck can, you know, unless you just have a discipline that you're just strictly buying on, you know, X percent pullbacks, retracements, what have you, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to participate. You know, you really got to be paying attention day in, day out. Right. Okay. Thank you. I've been no paid a dividend. <laughs> What's that, Josh? I didn't know NVIDIA paid a dividend. I mean, it's nothing, but interesting. Yeah. Usually those momentum ones don't, you know, pay dividends. 
till they uh, flip over like Apple. I think Facebook flipped over to it. So, anyway, all right. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. Anyone else? Questions, comments? All right. Uh, let's do, do real quick. Not much going on. Good. Five open trades. So I think this one, CN, this one right here, closed out. <clears throat> it's got earnings. I think it closed out, you know, near the close here. So kind of borderline, you know, going to be kind of break even there. But overall, you know, down in the bullish pre runners, up on the bullish runners. So kind of tit for tat, you know, up here, down there, just it's been that kind of quarter. You know, so we got, you know, some bearish runners still open. Yeah, I'd say we're somewhere around break even. Uh, overall, I think the best performers have been like the ball rise and bullish runners. So this all but one, uh, you know, hit. Close out a winner for those, so probably around a, a break even type ish um, quarter. Um, Q1 stinks again, but luckily, you know, we're going to Q2 in a couple weeks, so so that's it. Uh, any any questions on that? All right, well, Joe, I'll turn it over to you now. All right, Josh. Uh, and hi, everybody. Um, share that screen. Okay. You can see the screen now, right? Yep. Okay. Um, let's see. So um, I think essentially we've had a rolling correction. And, um, you know, here, NASDAQ 100, all time high today by by a lot, S&P, a couple points off its all-time high. And, um, you know, one of the things that we try to track is that S&P oscillator, which uh, when I go back to my notes on uh, our meeting from May 22nd, the S&P oscillator May 22nd was plus 7.8. You know, the way that thing works, plus or minus four or five is overbought, oversold theoretically. So, um, you know, we were you know, plus 7.8 in mid-May. We are minus 1.7 coming into today's market. And, you know, here we are, all-time highs, NDX, S&P, a couple points off. So, you know, I think, uh, I think some of the Fed stuff is, is just, it's like a circus. You know, there's so much chatter about what month of the cut. I mean, I think it's, it's just market noise. Ultimately, as Josh says, you know, rates have dropped from 4.6 to 4.3. That's a good thing for the market, certainly. But there's just so much damn noise that, uh, you know, I think it's all about the price action. And I think that, you know, earnings continue to surprise to the upside. Analysts continue to raise their numbers. And, you know, I, I think that's where we're going to continue to go. Just surprises to the upside are... Um, length of time in state ones in, in, you know, the various indexes, SPX, NDX, and Russell, there's time. And, and Russell, at this point, you just, you know, and I, I know we've had that debate. It, it predates me at Delphian, but Russell used to be, you know, the the real focus and, and lead to, I think, uh, the market analysis. Um, it, it, it just, it's such a laggard at this point. Um, you know, Josh, you know, tracks it well, the key breakout levels, but, you know, there's a hell of a lot going on and none of it's in the Russell, um, you know, and then the Dow rolling into state two, you know, and that, that just speaks to the, you know, the way the Dow's made up, you know, and I guess uh, it was CRM, you know, that took a hit, a couple doubt, might've been, um, one of the healthcare stocks too, but that, and, and I'll show you the retracements. I mean, the, the Dow went down a whole lot further than everybody else, but that's just, you know, the way that things 
constructed and uh, so it, it, it wasn't in lockstep with the rest of the indexes. Um, Josh mentioned non-farm payroll Friday. The numbers I've seen are, you know, 160, 170 grand. You know, it was only last month that uh, the market was looking for two and a quarter, 250 and got a buck 75. So, uh, you know, Friday will be interesting to see. Um, you know, so a bunch of charts. Uh, you know, here's TLT over the last six months. You know, we've looked at this line probably the last three weeks, and you know, we got a, a meaningful break above, you know, in the last couple of days. So, uh, you know, TLT. You know, these these uh, minor states don't take long, so we're talking, you know, maybe nine days. Uh, but you know, we're banging up against a uh, target level already in TLT. So. You know, it'll be interesting a week from now to see where we are with this thing, especially after, you know, non-farm on, uh, on Friday. Um, SPX retracements. Okay, and again, that, that low right here is the April 19 low. Um, and we are literally, uh, you know, less than 10 points from an all-time high. But um, this, uh, what was it, May, May, May 31st? I don't know how many of you were watching the markets that day, but damn, I, I was uh, out of the office and uh, had looked at the markets, you know, being down, down. And then I was like, what the hell happened? And, um, you know, it was a huge reversal. And, and something I mentioned to Josh, I guess, Tuesday morning was just, and I, and I heard this, it didn't strike me at first, but, you know, it was the last day of the month. And, you know, it got this, whatever, five, 600 point rally in the Dow and, you know, other indexes over the last, you know, three hours. And it just reminded me of sometimes the importance of, you know, what happens at the end of the week and, you know, what happens at the end of the month. And uh, so as it turned out, uh, and as Josh Apley pointed out, you know, the S&P uh, uh, target, I think the target was 5187. Um, or, or excuse me, the entry point for state one was 5187. The uh, three ace retracement was 5192, and I think the low was 5191. So uh, it was a pretty good level. Again, it was there for probably you know 10 minutes, but uh, turned out to be a decent level from a retracement standpoint. In addition to the uh, you know different target levels for uh, Delphian. Um, Josh, you know, pulled this up earlier. Again, that that twenty day average. So we we've you know come back to it and uh, talking about you know the analysis uh, of a couple of weeks ago. You know when we get up into the extremes above, I don't know what a catalyst you know might be, uh, but you know we're talking one hundred fifty two hundred points above that twenty uh, day moving average. So you know that takes you up close to that fifty five hundred level that uh, again we were talking about a few weeks ago. So. Um, you know, it's moving up above it today. Uh, and then this just, as Josh again pointed out, we got a lot of time, 23 days on an average move in the S&P. We've only moved a couple percent. You know, we've got plenty of room there. So got to believe surprises to the upside. Uh, let me see what day is this. This takes us out to uh, July 9th uh, as a possible, you know, average period of time. We do have something, and I'm, I'm not really suggesting uh, it's going to move the markets, but I, I think, you know, there's going to be a lot of talk about it as it comes up. That presidential debate on Thursday, June 27th, I can't wait to see how many people tune in for that thing. Um, you know, the market has done well after recent presidential elections um, you know, over the last three or four cycles, but I think... Uh, that July 20, or excuse me, June 27th date is uh, going to be an interesting one. Uh, you know, the Friday the uh, 28th will be an interesting day for the markets, I think. Uh, it's funny, Josh and I don't compare notes, uh, you know, before we do the meetings, just see who's going to talk about what. Um, but I also had pulled up, you know, the weightings and just wanted to pull up uh, – you know, at least the, the top three charts, you know, with the uh, 
S and P 500 weightings, and then it's uh, you know awful similar to NDX. But uh, you know we've got Microsoft just laying around. It's, it's state one with you know lots of room to the upside. Um, you know, could the market just go sideways for a while? It, you know, it certainly could. You know, a chart like this, you know, suggests, uh, you know, there, there's room before this thing breaks out above 430. But, you know, Microsoft's up another six bucks today. So uh, that's why the Nasdaq's up a couple hundred points. So um, very constructive chart there. Uh, NVIDIA, you know, talked about, but, you know, I think, you know, what'll be darn interesting is, a Shook's target three is 1175. Actually, we're through that today. Yeah, we're well above that. Um, so it'll be interesting to see whether, you know, 1175, as Josh likes to point out, uh, you know, these, these target levels often turn out to be support and resistance. So uh, I think NVIDIA was up around 1220 or so. Um, and then let me let me just see. Yeah, oh, it's like yeah. twelve ten. Twelve ten. Okay, I think it had been higher. Um, you know, and from a, from a timing perspective, and, and there have been fifty three state one occurrences. You mm -hmm. know, we've got uh, another couple weeks. You know, God forbid to the upside. One thing that that kind of jumped out at me a little bit this morning, and. It, you know, it was just, you know, the chart here coming out of the April 19 low, you know, you got a, a leg one to the upside, you know, a one, a two, three being the longest leg. That So leg one was 166 points. You then got, uh, you know, kind of a sideways pullback. Leg three was 273 points. And then, you know, the way this, you know, uh, LA wave stuff works and, and, you know, leg four here was super short. Oftentimes, leg four tends to be more complex. But, um, you know, if, in fact, this is going to be a five wave, that would project to 1235 to the upside. You know, uh, so, you know, just uh, it, 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 it was looking, you know, uh, like, like a bit of a five wave to me. And, you know, over the next couple of days, the split's Friday. You know, it would be interesting to see kind of the reaction we get out of that split, as uh, you know, had been discussed before. Um, you know, the other big weightings, you know, Apple certainly uh, not a bad thing for the markets uh, coming out of that earnings, you know, announcement. Uh, it, it's been nothing but higher lows, um, nothing but a good thing for the market here. Plenty of time, you know, obviously for Apple to the upside as well. And uh, lots of room from a target perspective. So, you know, it's it's kind of thing after thing that just speaks to the upside, certainly from, from Delphian analysis perspectives. And I think, you know, we, we've had a rolling correction, you know, for some period of time. And uh, the market may be ready to go again. NDX. Um, you know, same thing. Another another twenty days there. Uh, you know, got room to the upside, and you know, this thing is through those highs at this point today. You know, taken off. So uh, let me see. NDX, yeah, and that's Microsoft, at Apple, Nvidia. You know, they make up twenty five percent of this thing as well. So here's the uh, you know the rally on. Friday, last day of the month, and um, you know, I was looking at, I, I guess, you know, in a candlestick from a candlestick perspective, you know, that's a bullish hammer, and uh, you know, you don't, you don't often see tails quite like that. You know, more typically you get these bearish or bullish engulfing patterns, but you know, the length of that tail was was really unusual, which is why I went into you know check to see, you know, it's basically a bullish hammer, which is. A bullish formation. There's NDX and the retracements uh, coming out of the April 9 low. Again, just shy of a three ace retracement on uh, May 31st, you know, with that downside shadow. And uh, away we go to the upside. Um, Russell, you know, just from a, a retracement standpoint, 
you know, you got between uh, a three's retracement and 50%. Um, but, you know, not really much to talk about there. Uh, the Dow, uh, as we talked about, you know, that retraced a heck of a lot further than the 618 retracement. It was Salesforce and, uh, like I say, I think specifically one of the healthcare stocks that, that drove that thing down. Uh, there is Salesforce. You know, we talked about that last week, so I thought, you know, the three we pulled up last week, uh, Salesforce, um, Costco, and Dell. I just thought I'd pull up those charts after we talked about them last week. Um, you know, it's trying to recover from, uh, you know, some news that the street certainly didn't expect. Um, and one of these days, you know, we'll start talking about, uh, you know, different positions as well in, in some of these things. But, uh, you know, you would think, you know, with a pullback like this, you know, either uh, a call spread or, you know, buying a call spread or selling a put spread would, uh, would make some pretty good sense. One of the other ones, let me see, uh, there's Dell. I mean, uh, Dell had a heck of a pullback on the earnings too. And, you know, sure looks like uh, a lot of support around that 125 strike. So, Seems like an awful good place to, you know, put on a position. Uh, the other one was just Costco, which is, you know, just breathtaking. I'm a big fan of Costco myself. I, I wish I owned their stock. I mean, it just has been, uh, you know, ferocious and uh, no real end in sight. Let me go back to the Dell chart. I just, uh, where's Dell? Okay, yeah, Dell um, was that right, Josh? Hmm. Still, Dell still in state one. It looks huh. like it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, crazy. I mean, it was it was a mo a monster, you know, run from you know it's just an incredibly long state one, and uh, yeah. Um, you know, that'll be rolling over soon, I think. But, you know, that's something else. And, and we've done a little homework there is, you know, checking out some of these things that have just been in, you know, really long, you know, state one or state eights in particular. Um, let's see. Then, you know, the reason I picked gold is because, you know, when we go back to the home page, I always like to look at, you know, what the average moves are, you know, in the particular states and then where we are. And, you know, gold just, as we all know, it's been on an absolute tear and it's uh, darn near three times its average run, you know, uh, at its high, you know, at, at almost 20%. It, it's backed off, certainly. But, um, you know, that, that's why I pulled up the gold chart just because, uh, you know, it had had, you know, su such a uh, unusually strong run. And, uh, you know, this thing looks like it's in a trading range until it breaks 210 or above 225. So, um, I think, yeah, there, there were charts I wanted to pull up today, but happy to discuss anything. Any questions anybody may have? Not? Josh, we'll go back to you. All right. Well, thanks, Joe. Anyone else uh, open for questions or comments before we wrap it up? All right. Well, we'll wrap it up. Do it again next week. Thank you all. Thank thanks, you. everybody. Thank you.